In this video, I'll show you how I painted my Ultra Blue Ultramarine. Hello and welcome everybody to another brushstroke painting guide where this time I'm going to take you through the steps I took for painting this Ultramarine's Lieutenant. Now it's a really great model and it's one that I've been wanting to paint for a while and Ultramarine's is actually a paint scheme that I've wanted to do as well but it's always been niggling at me that there's already loads and loads of guides out there for Ultramarine's and what could I really do to do anything different and put my spin on it? Then I came across this really great Marvel Warhammer Kalgar comic series and I just really loved the vivid colours and the cell shading and it's that then that reminded me that I had a really punchy blue that I'd used previously in my Minotaurs video. Um, it's such a vivid pure blue, almost weapons grade blue and I thought I've never seen anyone try that comic book style with such a bright blue before for Ultramarines so I thought let's give that a go. Speaking of colours, all of the paints I use as usual will be listed in the description below along with links of where you can buy those at discount prices and including a paint bundle where you can get all the paints you need for this colour scheme in one click so please do check that out too. Very quickly though, before we make a start on the painting guide itself, I just want to say a massive thank you to everyone who's supported this channel and subscribed so far. It's really starting to grow now and uh, I really do appreciate that support. If this is the first time watching and you haven't subscribed yet, then please, please, please do hit that subscribe button now. And don't forget that notification bell to make sure that you get notified whenever I post another video. Also, if you do like this video, then please do click that like button and let me know in the comments what you like about it and what you'd like to see more of. Um, but in the meantime, let's make a start on some painting. And first off, I need to mention there's a few key things that I wanted to focus on to try and make this paint scheme work. The first one was I wanted it to be really, really smooth. So I put a lot of effort into the preparation of this model. If you'd like to see more about that, then please do check out my how to prepare models video. And the second thing is I want the colors to be very bright and vivid. So for this, I've done a black primer with a light gray zenithal highlight. And I've made sure I've put a lot of that zenithal on so that it's really bright. Right. and this should help keep the colors really vivid. If you wanted a darker scheme then I'd recommend just doing a black primer. Okay then so let's make a start with putting some colors on and the first one is going to be for all of the armor joints and for this I'm going to use Eschen Grey from Games Workshop. So as I mentioned at the start, a key aim for this paint job is to be super, super smooth. And that all starts with applying your base coats. So what I've done is I've added some water to my paint and I've thinned it down so it's flowing really smoothly from my brush, making it really easy to paint onto the model. I really don't need to be particularly neat here because we'll be painting in the other details as well. The key factor to focus on is getting that paint down nice and smoothly. Now because you've thinned it down it will make it a little bit more translucent so don't worry about that just get it on nice and smooth and then let it dry and then apply a second coat if you need to get to a solid finish. Now you will have noticed I'm painting this model as sub-assemblies, so don't forget to paint in all of the armour joints on all of the parts before moving on to the next step. And that next stage is going to be the exciting part of starting all of the armour panels, and for this I'm going to base coat all of the armour with blue from Monument Hobbies Pro Accrual Range. So just as I did with the Eschen Grey, I've thinned the blue down with some water. This will help it go in nice and cleanly and smoothly. I will need to apply several layers though to build up to a solid finish, but it is essential that you thin your paint in order to get that ultra smooth finish. Now this is the first time really I've used this paint, other than for a few small details and other models. Um, and it, its coverage is surprisingly good despite it being thinned down but one thing I have noticed is that when you do thin it down on your palette especially if it's a wet palette then over time it does like to separate so do keep an eye on that and make sure that you mix it back together before applying it to your model. Again, you don't need to be particularly neat with this stage, um, except when you come up against areas where you've already painted in that Eschen Grey. Make sure you take your time to be nice and neat along those edges. 
Uh, but the main focus really should always be to make sure you get that nice clean smooth finish. So apply as thin layers and build up to a solid colour. Which should give you something looking like this. Now I'm going to paint in all of the leather details and for this I'm going to use Dark Umber from Monument Hobbies Pro Acryl Range. Exactly the same process for this step as you have done already. Nice and clean, smooth base coating. Add that water to thin it down so it goes on nice and smooth. Apply multiple coats to get to a solid finish. Taking a little bit more care this time to make sure that you get the paint on the areas that you want. If you do accidentally go over areas uh, you've already painted, then just wait for it to dry and tidy things back up again with the base colour necessary. Continuing with the base colours, now I'm going to paint in all of the gold details. And for this I'm going to use Rich Gold from Monument Hobbies. There's actually quite a lot of gold details on the model and most of them are pretty small. So now you're going to have to start taking your time and picking out those details nice and carefully. If you do make any mistakes then just let it dry and paint back over with the base colour underneath. Not forgetting we're still going for that super smooth base coat so make sure that you add that water to thin the paint down. You don't want it too thin because you want to have lots of control for these fine details. So just take your time and work your way around the model. Sticking with the metallics, I'm now going to base coat in all of the silver details on the model. And for this, I'm going to use silver from Monument Hobbies. I've opted for this silver because it's a really bright silver and I wanted something that will go really well with the vivid paint scheme that we're doing. However, it is quite thin, so you might find that over the darker colors, you need to apply several coats to get to a solid finish. But it is worth it because it's a lovely silver. Don't forget to paint in all the silver details on things such as the backpack and the sword as well. Getting close to finishing off our base colours now, just a few more details to do. So now I'm going to paint in all of the red details and as I'm feeling brave maybe some stripes on the helmet too. And for this I'm going to use Corn Red from GW. Just like with all the other base colours, I've added some water to thin this down. Now to add these details, I'm barely touching the model, I'm just letting the paint flow from the brush. I'm just going to move it around so it settles onto those details. If you do make any mistakes, then let it dry fully and then paint back over with the base colour underneath. Okay, so for the helmet, I'm just going to use the ridge at the top of the helmet here as a guide and I'm going to draw some straight lines straight down from that over the edge. And then once I've got those lines in place, I can just start filling it in. Don't worry too much if your lines go a little bit wonky, just let it all dry and then go back in and neaten everything back up again with some blue later. When you're painting in details like this, it's really important that you keep your paint very thin. That way, when you build up multiple layers, you don't get any streaks or grooves. And I'm not going to worry about this skull on the front, um, I can just paint over that and paint it back in again later. Next I'm going to base coat in any white details on the model and this is going to include some white stripes on the helmet too. And for this I'm going to use Celestra Grey from Games Workshop. Just as with the corn red I've thinned this down a lot so it goes on smooth and I'm going to start with these side stripes from the ridge and then I'll go back and do the uh, ones further up. Um, and then it's just a case of let that dry and finesse and tidy up as appropriate. And for the other white details then just uh, exactly the same process as we've done with the corn red. Just thin the paint down and very gently push it round onto the details and build it up to a solid colour with multiple layers. Moving on now to the purity seals and the scroll on the shoulder and I'm going to start painting those in with some Ushapti Bone from Games Workshop. Which brings us on to our last base colour and this is going to be for the purity seals themselves and for this I'm going to use Screamer Pink from Games Workshop.
For the next section, I'm now going to concentrate on painting up the face for this model, and I'm going to start off with an all-over base coat of Cadian Flesh from Games Workshop. One key thing for painting flesh tones is obviously you want to have a nice smooth finish. So that's good that we've had practice so far for all our base coats being really smooth. So again, I thin this down with some water um, and I'm actually going to take advantage of having a light primer underneath because it's a soft grey. I won't need to paint in the eyes because that will double up for the white of the eyes as well. So I'm just going to paint around all the face making sure I get it into all of the uh, recesses and creases and all the details on the face and because this is quite a thin colour I'm going to have to apply two thin coats to be able to get to a solid finish. Right, okay, so I've got a really nice base now for my skin tone and that Zenithal Primer has actually given a nice black outline to the eyes as well, which is really great. So now I'm going to brighten up some areas of the face using some Kislev Flesh from Games Workshop. So what I'm aiming to do with this step is I'm pretty much painting all the face in again with some thinned down Kislev Flesh. But I'm not going to paint in any of the deepest recesses and creases where those shadows would be. I'll leave that Cadian Flesh tone showing through. It's also worth noting that I'm only going to apply one thin layer of the Kislev Flesh. I actually want it to be quite translucent so you can see some of the colour underneath and it will also help blend things in. Now I'm going to add a final highlight to all those raised areas on the face and for this I'm going to use Flayed One Flesh from Games Workshop. For this step you're really looking to concentrate on any of the areas that will catch the most light, so that's like the bridge of the nose, the brow line here leaving any creases of course, um, top of the cheekbones, um, maybe paint in some creases on the forehead as well, the chin, that kind of thing. The key bit here really is to, as always, have some nice thin down paint but have very little of it on your brush so it doesn't get out of control. And then just focus on the areas where you want to be the brightest. You can be quite subtle with this and build up multiple layers just to add that emphasis if you need. Okay, so that's looking pretty good now. I'm just going to tint some areas just to add a little bit more interest to the face. And for this, I'm going to use Caraburg Crimson Thinned with some Lamian Medium from Games Workshop. Thin down this wash quite a bit, so it's one part wash to two parts medium. And I'm just going to pick out some key areas like the bags under the eyes, um, maybe the lips as well, just to give a bit more colour. Uh, switching over now to this other eye. Just trying to be really careful here just to pick out those creases and not let it run into the eye socket itself. Got very little wash in the brush just to try and keep that extra control. And then um, around the studs in his forehead as well, maybe make that look a bit more inflamed. With the face done, I'm now going to do the hair. I was going to do it black, but I actually really like this grey, so now I'm going to base coat it all with Celestra Grey from Games Workshop. Nothing really very special with this stage, just thin down Celestra Grey. You do need to take your time though, because obviously you want to take care not to paint over any of that nice flesh tone that you've painted in, uh, and then just make sure you get a nice smooth finish.
For this next stage I thought I'd try something a little bit different and actually stipple on some texture for the highlight on the hair. So for this I'm going to use some Ulthorn Grey from Games Workshop. If you're not familiar with stippling, it's a technique very similar to dry brushing. So I've got my dry brush and I've uh, emptied it of pretty much all the paint by brushing it onto some tissue. And now rather than brushing side to side, I'm just going to dab back and forth. So by repeating this process, it's just building up those tiny little dots in random patterns and um, hoping to give sort of a, a crew cut kind of look to the hair. Moving on now to applying some washes to add some depth and shadow to the model. And starting off with all the blue armor, I'm going to shade that with blue tone from the Army Painter. So for this step, it's actually your choice. You could either apply the shade wash as a recess shade and just run it into all the grooves and recesses. Or as I prefer, you could apply it all over the blue armor and then layer it up again later. Whichever method you do go for, the main aim here is to make sure that you get that shade into all of those recesses and grooves and really darken down where those shadows would be. Once you've applied your wash, it's very important that you let it dry fully before moving on to the next stage. This can take between 20 and 30 minutes, depending on how much you apply. So with that blue wash now fully dry, I'm going to apply a wash to all of the gold details. And for this, I'm going to use Seraphim Sepia from Games Workshop. Just as with the previous stage, you're looking to encourage the wash to settle into all of these creases and recesses and pull up a little bit where you want those extra shadows to be. Once you've applied that wash to all the gold details, do remember it's very important to let it dry fully before moving on to the next stage. Next, I'm going to be applying another wash, and this time it's to all of the leather, silver, and eschen grey details. And for this, it's going to be Null Oil from Games Workshop. So it's getting a little bit trickier now because obviously you don't want to get the wash onto any of the other areas of the model. So do just take your time and work your way around the details. If you do get a bit of a shadow on some of the other areas, then it's not the end of the world. Um, if it's a big mistake, then you will need to go back and touch up with the other color. Don't forget to add this wash to all of the Eschen Grey armor joints. And you'll also want to wash all of the um, silver metal on the backpack and sword, etc. And obviously, let this fully dry before moving on to the next stage. Which brings me on to the final wash, and that's going to be to all of the purity seals and any scroll details. And for this, I'm going to use Agrax Earthshade from Games Workshop. So those washes have really added some depth and shadow to the model, but now I want to brighten the armor back up again by adding a layer of blue from Pro Acryl. So the aim to this step is just to brighten up all the panels by adding a layer of the blue and leaving the null oil in all of the recesses and the creases. If you've done the recess shade, all you'll probably need to do is just tidy up a couple of watermarks and all the other panels will be nice and bright. If, like me, you did a full wash, then you're going to need to go around each of the panels and layer that blue back in. So you're probably wondering what's the point of not just doing the recess shade? Well, for me, I like to know where the shadows are going to be and uh, get to choose just how bright I want to make the armor. It gives that little bit more flexibility. In this particular case, it means that I can have a nice strong shadow line to give that sort of comic effect. So as I did with the base layer, I've thinned it with water to make sure it goes on nice and smooth. And I'm just going to apply it over the panel where I want it to be brighter. Because this paint is actually quite um, heavy with pigment, it shouldn't take more than one layer just to brighten up those panels. Now that I've got that armor looking nice and bright again, I'm going to stick with working on the armor and I'm going to add the first edge highlight. And for this, I'm going to use a mixture of paint. So it's going to be faded ultramarine mixed with some of the original blue that we've just been working with. And they're both from Pro Acryl. 
So the mix ratio for this is two parts of the faded ultramarine to one part blue and I'm going to use this mixture to edge highlight all the edges of all the armor panels. Okay so the purpose of this edge highlight is actually quite subtle in the end but it does help just lighten the edges. When it goes on it's a lot brighter than when it dries so don't be alarmed when you first start painting it on. The main thing to remember when edge highlighting is just always take your time and don't be afraid to make mistakes because they can always be corrected later. But if you would like more advice and tips and tricks on how to edge highlight then please do check out my video above. And now I'm going to add one final edge highlight to the blue armor and for this I'm going to use grey blue from Pro Acryl. So this is a much brighter color and I'm going to use this edge highlight on all of the top edges of the model and the ones that are catching the most light and any areas that I want to bring some attention to. Just as before, you really want to take your time with this and try and get them as neat and crisp as possible. But if you do make any mistakes, then just go back and neaten back up again with the base colour of the armour. With all those blue edges now done, it's time to turn my attention to the leather details and you guessed it, edge highlighting, this time starting off with Mournfang Brown from Games Workshop. Very similar to the blue armour, the first edge highlight is really just a subtle one to lighten the edges, but in this particular case you can be a little bit more messy because it could be as if the leather is all worn and torn at the edges. Also maybe add in some scratches and some texture. Now as the final edge highlight to that leather, I'm going to use Scrag Brown from Games Workshop. So again, for this final edge highlight, I'm just going to use it to pick out the topmost edges to catch the most light and any sort of sharp corners and points of interest. Now's a good time to brighten up all those gold details and for this I'm going to apply a layer of Liberator Gold from Games Workshop. As you might expect, for this stage I'm picking out all of the raised areas on the gold and I'm leaving that shaded area in the recesses and the creases. As you're applying the Liberator Gold you'll find it's actually quite thin and you can still see the colours underneath. This is absolutely brilliant and um, what we're really looking for is just to add that extra shine back to the gold. You will still need to add a touch of water to make it go on smoothly though and do take your time so that it doesn't run all over the place. I'm going to leave the gold for now and I'll add the final highlight when the model's fully assembled. So next I'm going to move on to brightening up all the red details with a layer of Evil Sun Scarlet from Games Workshop. Exactly the same process as the layering we've done already. A little bit of thinned down paint, painting the raised areas, leaving those recesses unpainted. When it came to brightening the red stripe on the helmet, I tried to leave a little line of the darker red showing from underneath so that it separated the red from the white. Next, I'm going to brighten the purity seals by picking out the raised details with some Screamer Pink from Games Workshop. Moving on now to all of the white details and I'm going to brighten all those up by adding a layer of Althorn Grey from Games Workshop.
At this point I thought it was about time I got the model assembled and now I'm going to add in the final highlights to all the gold and silver areas using silver from Pro Acryl. So exactly the same process as the final edging on the blue armor, picking out all of the top edges and um, sharp corners just to draw the eye and bring out those details. Just one final edge highlight to add now, and that's to the parchments and scrolls. Oh, and the little bones on the front, and for this I'm going to use Screaming Skull from Games Workshop. And when this final highlight is complete, it's time to add the model to its base, and this Ultramarine is done! I really hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, then please hit that like button. It really helps the channel, and it helps me make more of these videos. If you'd like to see more 40k content, then please drop a comment below and let me know what you'd like to see. Don't forget, there's a paint bundle and uh, links to all the paints I've used in the description below, so please check those out too. If you've not subscribed yet, then please hit that subscribe button and don't forget the notification bell to be told whenever I post another video. But thanks again for watching and I hope to see you in another video very soon.